so I've been on a binge of compressed air engine videos lately. Watching all these videos made me want to try and make one for myself, so that's what I did. I designed all of the parts in Fusion 360, sliced them in Cura, and then printed them in PLA on my Ender 3. Before we go any further, I'll just quickly run through how my engine works. I went for a single cylinder design, so I had less things to worry about when trying to get the engine to actually run. As this is a single cylinder engine, it requires a little help to get started. Once you give it a spin, the pushrod opens the ball valve, allowing high pressure air into the cylinder. The high pressure air forces the piston down the cylinder. This linear motion of the piston is converted to rotational motion by the crankshaft, which turns the flywheel. The flywheel maintains this rotational motion, which forces the piston back up the cylinder. Just after the piston passes top dead centre, the pushrod cam pushes up the pushrod, which opens the air inlet valve, starting the cycle all over again. The animation on the left shows the motion of the piston with the crankshaft, and the animation on the right shows the movement of the pushrod as the crankshaft rotates. This animation shows two subtle, but quite important features of the engine. The pushrod cam is angled slightly to the left when the piston is at top dead centre, this angle essentially determines when the ball valve is open to allow the air in. This was probably the place where I made the biggest mistake in the design process. I basically just found an article online showing the valve's timing for a combustion engine. And pretty much just copied that and then forgot about it. The first time I put the engine together and tried to get it to work, surprise surprise, it didn't. So I recorded it in slow motion to see if I could figure out what was going on. Looking at the slow motion footage, you can see that the engine seems to slow down with each rotation. This was because the valve was opening too early, before the piston had passed top dead centre. So the air is basically trying to push the piston back in the direction from which it just came. Return from whence you came! This slows down the engine and eventually causes it to stop. Based on this, I knew I needed to change the angle of the pushrod cam. So I tried winging it a few times and failed every time. So I did what I should have done in the first place and animated the Giants Infusion 360. I then printed out the pushrod cam with the correct angle and it worked first time. The other important feature on this animation is the length of the screw which comes out of the top of the pushrod. This essentially controls the length of time that the valve is open. If the screw is too short, it either won't open the valve at all or it won't open it long enough for enough air to get in to allow the engine to turn over. If the screw is too long, then the push rod will just hold open the ball valve, so you won't actually be able to pump up the engine. The way I've designed the engine, the BB ball, what's acting as the ball valve, can only be pushed up so far. So what's happening here is that the ball valve is being pushed to the limit of its range and it's not allowing the engine to continue to rotate. Now that I've over explained the shit out of my engine, let's take a look at the build process. So the first thing to do is to connect the piston cylinder to the top half of the crankcase. Next I'm going to insert the screw into the push rod. Next I'm going to connect the piston head to the con rod using a M3 by 10 bolt. The, the con rod has some brass tubing in it. This is just to decrease the friction a little bit. The outer diameter is 4mm and the inner diameter is 3mm. The propeller crank, con rod and pushrod crank all fit together to make the crankshaft assembly. 
this was an M4 by 20 volt, but I had to shave it down slightly. I think it's about 14 millimeters. So next is to connect the bearings. This this can be quite tricky, so depending on the tolerances of the 3D printer, you might need to sand sand these down a little bit. That is probably the least fun part of the entire build. You just need to make sure the screw and the outer edge of the bearing don't touch as if they are the bearing won't spin freely. Okay so now I'm just going to put the push rod into its slot. Once the push rod is slotted in, slide the piston into the cylinder so the bearings rest on the crankcase. Now the lower half of the crankcase is fixed to the other half using four M3 by 12 bolts, making sure the two halves of the crankcase are roughly parallel. This is a 4.5 by two millimeter O-ring being placed into the valve assembly. The cardboard gasket is just cut out from some Amazon packaging I had lying around. I just traced around the edges of the 3D printed part. The valve assembly is then placed on top of the gasket and is secured to the piston cylinder using two M3 by 12 bolts. Next, a 9x2mm o-ring sits on this raised section. It seals the joint between the valve assembly and the bottle connection. Next, the BB ball is put in position and the bottle connection piece is fitted on top. Four M4 by 20 bolts then secure the bottle connection to the valve assembly and the piston cylinder. Next, the propeller is slid into place and secured using a little metal ring. The bottle plug has a 17 by 25 mm o-ring, which creates a good seal between the engine and the bottle. Let's talk about this plug for a second. Air was leaking through the bottle thread, so I designed this plug to try and stop the leakage. But in order to test whether it actually worked, I printed one with no hole for air to pass through. This was fine until I realised I couldn't actually get it out by hand. So the only way I could think to get it out was to pump up the bottle until it shot out. Shee. The first time this was fine. But stupidly I did it again because I wanted it in super slow motion. And this happened. As well as the hole created by the plug, the force at which the bottle was shot backwards also created a hole in the other side of the box. I managed to fix it with some of the shattered pieces, cardboard and some hot glue. So it's not a complete disaster. Uh, funny though. Anyway, back to the build. The bottle then simply screws into the engine, pushing up against the plug and producing a good seal. And there we have it, one compressed air engine. Now all that's left to do is pump it up. Then I pump it up and realize it doesn't work. But this is expected, as some fine tuning of the pushrod screw is needed. To do this, I remove the four screws holding the lower half of the crankcase in place, then take the crankshaft and piston assembly out. Then simply adjust the length of the screw using a screwdriver. I found that a screw length of around 10.5 to 13.2 millimeters seems to work quite well. Then just put it back together as before and try again.
I wanted to get an idea of the RPM of my engine, but I don't have a tachometer, so I got the slow motion camera out and put a timer next to it. The engine takes about half a second to a second to get up to full speed, but then you've also got to consider that as the pressure of the engine decreases, the engine speed will decrease. So to try and get a peak RPM, I used a short time period, just one second. The slow motion footage shows about five and a quarter rotations per second, or 5.25 rotations per second. There are 60 seconds per minute. So we do 5.25 times 60, which gives an RPM of approximately 315. So the RPM is pretty slow, but I'm not too bothered about this, as it was a first attempt and the whole goal here was just to get the engine running. I'll definitely be looking to make this engine more efficient and to operate at a higher RPM. But that's a problem for future me. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more like this in the future, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified about future videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.